University. Uh, today we are going to talk about fire. You know, um, our issue two covered fire and food, so um, we're going to break down just fire. That's uh, what we use, uh, what we prefer, different options that you can use. We're going to talk about uh, how to get a spark of flame started, our preferred method. Uh, we're going to talk about different types of store-bought tinder you can have or, or buy. Uh, we're going to talk about different types of tinder you can find um, while in nature as well. Uh, go through some of the kits that we have, you know, preferred methods of carrying it, and um, just kind of break down, you know, what we use. Um, and then make sure that uh, comment below as far as if you have any other questions that you want us to cover in our next live video that we do on Facebook. Uh, so make sure you leave your questions and comments below. We'll cover those. And, um, you know, let's just work on, on building, um, building our kits, making them better, and working together as a community. Absolutely. So, um, so Chris is here with me. Um, we're just going to kind of start at the top. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, well, what's your, what's your good? You're in the woods, you know. This isn't like a survival situation. Yeah. Per se. But you're in the woods, you're hiking, you're I'm camping. hiking. And you're going to build a fire. What's your go-to? What yeah. are you going to grab first? I, I mean, first, it's a lighter. Yeah. It's uh, a big lighter. Uh, uh, and, and I mean, when we say lighter, it can be whatever kind you prefer. Uh, you can get a peanut lighter. Yep, uh, I've got I like, one. I like here the one. New Myth lighter. I, it's here somewhere. This uh, is this is my preferred. Yeah. And this thing is kind of crazy. I like it. There. Fire. I got fire. Yeah. You know, that's going to light something on fire. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's butane. It don't last forever. You got to carry fuel, but this is so convenient and easy. Yeah. And I can do this with one hand. Yeah. Even if I'm injured, yeah, I can get a fire going. Yeah. And th this thing's kind of cool too. You can switch it, and it'll, you know, do it that way. Go slow. Well. So this is my go-to. This is, and I carry like just like you. I carry a big lighter too. Yeah. You know, a couple of them because I think so many people get caught up in the the primitive fire skills, and those are fun to learn. They're fun to practice, and I do too, and I like doing them. But and sometimes I'll use that as my primary method. Right. But if I'm in a, in a, in a real emergency and I need a fire, yeah, I'm yeah. going to start with this. Yeah, and and I will say you'll see a theme that goes along with my fire kit. Uh, pretty much everything in it is bright orange. Yeah, good. good, uh, good, good I, idea. I'm not I'm not trying to hide at this point. If I'm yeah. building a fire, yeah, you're not hiding. And so. uh, the last thing that I would want is to drop a all black ferro rod or something into yeah. leaves on the ground, and now you can't find it. And you know, I, I remember. On your season of alone, I can't remember which which guy it was. Joe, he lost his ferro rod. He was on yeah. a beach that was literally like black pebble yep. stone. Okay. Yep. And he, I think he set it on his jacket or something, and, and he, then lifted his jacket up and flipped his jacket up and tossed his ferro rod. And and literally, it broke his will. Yeah, it like did. he was done. It crushed him uh, because he was like, I, I, yeah, that was his. You know, I, I think at times we talk about morale boosters. Oh yeah. And and there's there's less boosters than there is negatives. negatives. Yeah, there's, there's know, less positives can, than there are negatives. You can find sure. so many negatives in, in losing your way to build a fire. Well, and fire, I mean, not only can it, you know, cook your food, purify yeah. your water, keep you warm, yeah. but it is a morale booster. Absolutely. When, when things are bad and you're in a hard time or a rough spot, especially if you're wet and cold, yeah. man, getting a fire yeah. is just such a morale boost. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll bring you up mentally, physically even. Yeah, and, and so. I will say, it, as far as a Bic lighter, I mean, this is probably what most people lean to. Always make sure you take a small zip tie and run it yeah. under the plunger, this red part right here. That way it can't get depressed in your bag and yeah. bleed out all So that fuel. when you need it, you know. And the reason why I start with a lighter is because it gives me a constant flame mm -hmm. to get something started, yeah. where if you're trying to use a ferro rod, you're working with sparks, and I mean, it can just take a while. It doesn't give you that constant right. flame that you can hold something constant over. Constant source of heat to begin it. with. Yeah. You know, I mean. So, so I always start with, with a lighter. Yeah, that's, me too. That's, that's my my go-to. Same deal. And um, now, and now that you mentioned that, I need to get some reflective tape to put on this because I keep forgetting to do that. Yeah, so. and and I mean that's just something. You know, there's things. One of the biggest things that that. I want to get out of these universities is passing on our failures yeah. uh, and our bad experiences because yeah. I think you learn more from the bad experiences than the good ones. Yep. And and I have learned throughout the years, being in the woods hiking, everything's bright orange. Period. That's, that's good. I well, mean, that's why like I use I wouldn't use a blue, blue or a black yeah. or a green one. Yeah. I want something that's I like the blues and 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 like red too. That it's not a natural color. Yeah. The blue in particular to me stands yeah. out. Yeah. If I drop that in the woods because it's not a natural color. Yeah. And your eye can kind of go so, through it. So. so I start with a lighter, um, you know, and so, I mean, that's a, you know, that's that's the easiest way, I think, to to get a fire going. Um, and then we'll talk about 
let's go ferro rod kind of options. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a zillion styles of, of ferro rods. Um, Big, small, Yeah, this, this is a, a true fire tactical here uh, with the magnesium. And then the ferro rod, um, he makes a great product. There's even a little magnet in here to keep your piece of blade. Nice. So you can throw your spark, um, and it's always there. Of course, you can use your knife if you lose it or whatever, but it's nice to have it right there. Yeah. Yeah, and you can get the magnesium ones that like Coleman makes and stuff that you see at Walmart all the time. <laughs> I'm those, not a huge fan of them. If you're going to buy those magnesium block ones, don't buy the Coleman or the Colgan's. Yeah. You need to find one manufactured by Doan's company, D-O-A-N-S. That is the real one that works. The magnesium and like the, Col and the Coleman and those cheap ones, that stuff is so hard. Yeah. It is nearly impossible yeah. to scrape. Like this magnesium here on this one, this is some of the softest magnesium there is. And this stuff just comes off so easy. Yeah. So there we go. A couple scrapes. I've already started building a pile of magnesium. Yeah. And that's what you need. You don't want something that you're having to work to yeah. get at. You want it to just peel off in nice little curls. Yeah. You know, a little bit of pressure right there. You can see you get nice little curls yeah. out of it. Yeah. And that's what you want. Because you need that surface area and that curl too. If you just have a powdered pile of dust laid on the ground and you hit it with a spark, it may or may not catch. Yeah. Um, but when you have these little curls, that actually catches the spark way better. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is just a, an inexpensive ferro rod that I, I have in my pack as a, as a secondary, you know, fire source if I want to. Um, and it comes with a striker. I mean, you can use a blade if you want. But, you know, I, I like ferro rods as a, a long-term oh, yeah. survival. A fail-safe. I mean, yeah. wet, whatever, they're going to work. And, and you're going to get years, really, yeah. out of these things. I mean... Uh, you know, I know Chris has a real big diameter. Yeah, I've got a one-inch one. It's about that long. It weighs one pound. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a little overkill, but that's that's hey, Chris. Bigger's better. Man. Uh, you know, these things. I mean, you can get thousands upon thousands oh, of yeah. strikes off. Well, of and too, you know, there's a way to do this. Um, you know, I see a lot of people. They'll, they'll have their ferro rod, in particular if they're using a knife, man. They'll they'll just hammer on these things, yeah. and and it's not necessary. A simple piece of hacksaw blade like this, and a, well, it's not like that on fire. And a, just a simple little strike, knock the carbon off this thing here. That's all you need, just yeah. that. That's all you need to do. You, you know, you watch like Naked and Afraid and stuff, and you'll see people chopping on these things. Um, you're destroying the life of it. It's not going to last nearly as long. You're not going to get nearly as many uses yeah. out of it as just a simple yeah. strike. And you're saying, some of you are looking and saying, oh, that's not enough to light a fire. Well, I guarantee you, I put this into the right tender, pile of this yeah. stuff. Um, you know, like I carry even a bag of magnesium. Let's not hit that. It'd be a hell of a fire. But you know, it, it's going to catch. Yeah. Um, so you don't need to. Don't abuse your your tool here. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. Is you know, use it properly, and it'll last a long, long time. Yeah. And so I mean, that's a that's a you know, ferro rods. You know, in general, um, are are great to have around um, as as a backup. You know, uh, take a little bit longer to get a fire. You, I think I think the biggest thing is is as you tear down your tinder your setup everything has to be perfect. Yes. You know, with a yeah. fire with a with a lighter it could be a little bit wet, a little bit damp, yeah. you're still going to get it going. A little bit bigger. The, the, yeah. And it's like when you go from from man-made objects to now primitive where we're mm -hmm. talking flint and steel or you know rubbing stick, you know, bow drills, yep. however, then Friction it has fires. to be perfection. Yeah, yeah you've got to have and that's the thing too when we start talking about building a fire Get everything together. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these shows I watch, you'll see the people set out to build a fire, and they'll have a little pile of leaves or something, and they'll use their magnesium, and they'll get that lit, and then they're looking around for stuff to add to it. Get your tinder ready. Yeah. Get your kindling ready. You know, get the next size stuff because I don't go from kindling straight up to you know wood, and then your bigger fuel so that you can build that thing up into a sustainable heat source and then have a fire. Yeah. It's it. It's not the time to go looking for firewood when there's a flame. You need to have that all set. And the rule I like to use is gather as much as you think you need and then double that. Yeah. Because no one ever gathers enough firewood. Yeah. We've all been there and camping in the middle of the night and we're stumbling around in the dark looking for something to throw on the fire because it's about to go out. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, next, next way you can go is, is a spark wheel, you know, um, which is pretty much a, a very thin ferro rod. Uh, turned vertically. Yeah, like so zip the lighter flint. So instead, you know? yeah, yeah. So instead of striking the side, you're now rubbing the top with an aggressive, you know, striker wheel, kind of like you find on a lighter, and you get, you know, a nice, a nice little spark. Um, I actually prefer this 
over a ferro rod because this I can operate, I mean, literally if I have three yeah, fingers. with one hand, know, yeah. Um, I don't need two hands. Um, what it also allows me to do with a ferro rod, you're always trying to get it into the tender, and if it slips or something, then you're knocking you're your tender and you're blasting. Yeah. Where this, I mean, if, if I'm holding whatever it might be, a, a, a petroleum oh, jelly. Or, or like these commercial. Quick tender, you yeah. know, I can hold it precisely where I want right. it and, and direct the spark exactly yeah. where, where I want it. Uh, this is the Exotac one. This is hands down my favorite one. I, I think it's the best engineered spark wheel there is. I mean, from the lanyard attachment. And then you can unscrew the bottom and it keeps a quick tender tab in here. So, you know, I always have an emergency way of starting a fire um, on me all in one package. It's watertight. You can, you know, throw this in the water. You're never going to worry about it. It's great for throwing in your pocket, keychain, in your bag, small kits, yep. and, and you have. So, so that's a spark wheel. Um, <coughs> and I would consider those to be the three primary methods. Primary yeah. methods. Lighter, yeah. ferro rod, spark wheel. Yeah, when you're talking um, man made stuff without getting into the primitive yeah. frictions and all yeah. that. And then from there, we can talk about. Well, and I would say there's a couple more ways to start a fire. I mean, uh, nine volt battery. Well, nine steel volt battery, steel wool. wool. A road flare. You know, this uh, is a this is the end all be all yeah. emergency fire starter right yeah. here. And, uh, or um, something similar to a road flare is uh, I didn't bring one with me, but they're called fire pucks. You can search them on Amazon. They're pretty much a road flare, but it's like a hockey puck size uh, object that you strike the top, and they burn for probably seven or eight minutes. I mean, a fire that. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. You'll get a fire. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, those are those are the ways that that we prefer to start fire, and then um, you can go the primitive route also. Yeah. You know, which which we'll do another video. Yeah, on, we'll, on that different. We'll get ways. out one day and, and out in the field somewhere. Yeah. We'll shoot one where we mess with all these different ones and talk about. So, it. So, but we're just talking, you know, man-made stuff that you can you can buy, throw into your kit, and get your fire kit going. Um, so then the next step, I mean, we've we've talked about how to produce a, a spark how or a get flame. The spark, yep now something to catch it. Yeah, and we just talked about magnesium, so here's yeah. just a sack of, of magnesium shavings that I have that this would be thousands upon thousands of fires in this yeah. bag right here. Yeah, quite a few. I mean, really, because you just need a pinch of this stuff. Yeah. And one of the cool things I think people are doing nowadays is, you know, we all carry 550 cord, and they're coming out with the newer ones with everything from brass wire in them yeah. to fishing line, fishing line yep. jute in this one. Um, this one here has the, the fire Fire cord, cord, I think yeah, they call cord, it, yeah. which is this stuff here, which is pretty cool. Um, this easily takes a spark. You know, you want to rough it up, get those fibers exposed yeah. to catch your spark, and and this is your tinder. You get this going, then you have a tinder nest, obviously, of fine grass, yeah. um, the finest stuff. The finer, the better. The more surface area on that product, the better. Into which you'll put this and get it burning, and then you start building your fire from there. Yeah. Um, my all-time favorite for that, though, always is just the Vaseline and cotton balls. Yeah. Um, you know, you can make these yourself at home, and, like, that's all you need. Yeah. That right there will start your fire. And, and here, here's one thing that I'll say about universities, our Facebook Live. You're going to realize Chris and I don't agree all the time oh, no. on a lot of things. No. Uh, I, I hate petroleum jelly cotton balls. I hate I feel like it's just I'm in the woods. Now I have junk all over my hands. And See, I'm, but to me, this... But they're, cheap, they're inexpensive. They work well. They burn well. They're reliable. Um, yeah, I, I agree with with all of that. Um, the other thing too, see, the, the other reason I carry this stuff is, you know, you're in the woods. You know, um, tool maintenance. You know, you got a, you're gonna, you got rust on a blade or something. Your hatchet, your knife. Your, you can smear this stuff on it. You can use it on your lips. Yeah. You can you I, know, chap skin. I use something similar. It's a little bit cleaner at times. Um, I use. And you can get these at almost any medical, I, I'm, you can get them at Walgreens, CVS. Um, they are Vaseline prep pads. Yes. Uh, yeah. Vaseline prep pads, they come in this very thin mylar uh, bag. You open yep. them up. Uh, they're medical grade stuff. I mean, they're completely sealed. Um, they have tons of uses. First of all, I can use it, uh, we're talking about fire, but yeah. I mean, you can use it. it. Pretty much if there's a gunshot wound and you get thrown into an ambulance and it's a, a chest wound, uh, an EMT is going to use a petroleum pad for the most part. That's what they use most of the time because they're just cost effective. Yeah. They can't pull out halo seals right. for every single time. Um, they're going to stick that on you and tape you up with that and then vent it off as they need to. So, I mean, it could be used as a uh, like a sucking oh. chest wound. 
uh, gunshot wound. It can be used for fire. So I mean, I, I, I do carry those because yeah. they're multiple, but they they stay a little bit cleaner because I can just open them up and I can spark it in there. I don't um, mind if my fingers get a little dirty when I'm in the woods. Yeah, you know, um, that's the difference between us. Uh, <laughs> You know, you can go with the, the, the quick light, quick tender. There's all kinds of different I names. carry those. Uh, I've got my little PSKs in my bag yeah. over there, and, and those are what's in my PSK. That's Because, again, I don't want to pack this into a PSK. Yeah. The, the, this, this one came from Exotac just because it came with the Exotac striker that I bought. Um, I will say when you're looking for these, look for the ones that are kind of pink or orange looking because that means they have wax coating on them. There's oh. a lot of guys that will just, they make cotton. It's yeah. just cotton. Yeah. You know, and yes, they'll catch, um, but they won't burn as long because they don't yeah, have that'll that burn wax and longer. It's got so, a fuel in there. Yeah, so it's got a fuel. So make sure you look for the ones. You know, I mean, I know. Gosh, UST makes the, the every, uh, everybody. I mean, I buy them in bulk on Amazon. Yeah, I buy them like fifty or a hundred at a time. I get these big bags yeah. of them, and, and just I just look. Put them in kits and use. They'll them. have a slightish like orangish pink tint to them, and that means it has wax. And those are the ones that I I prefer to use. Um, Anything to extend bird time is a good, yeah, good call. Yeah, so so make sure you look at that. Um, you know, we have InstaFire here. There's a lot of these too. I know Wise Food makes one as well. Um, this falls in the same line as uh, Wet Fire, uh, yeah. Trioxane yeah, bars. Yeah, Trioxane bars. Um, yeah. You know, all kinds of stuff. This is pretty much a granulated yep. Trioxane bar. I, I, I mean, I, I know there's other stuff in here. Whatever. Well, it's the. It, I haven't messed with that that stuff yet. This kind of product. Bad. Well, does it work with a ferro rod? Yes. It does. Yeah, okay. yeah it'll All work right. pretty well. So this is one of the fire kits that I have, um, and, and I have it. I, what I do is, is I actually take these, because this is probably three or four fires probably in here, I would say. Okay. Uh, so I'll take these, and I'll take smaller Ziploc bags, and I'll Break portion it, it out, okay. and then I can throw it in different kits. Um, it, what you can also do with this is, if you leave it as a, as a bigger, I mean, you can throw this in. It's, it's light as can be. Oh, yeah. You know? It don't weigh nothing. You can get a, a fire started, get some tender on it, and then pour some more of this on there as like more fuel to build it up. To build it to up, a little more heat, yeah. especially like if, if it's you're, a little if damp, or damp wet. dry, yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, so you know, Insta Fire, Trioxane bars, wet fire. Um, it's a it's a solid fuel source yeah. that that you can it, use, and it's one that you know is going to light. Yeah, you know, the the stuff we find in nature, you know, be it birch barks or mosses, grasses, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're inconsistent. Yeah, they're they're natural. They're they're you know they're not always going to be the same. The benefits of this kind of stuff, you know, is it's it's a known. You yeah. know what it is. You know it's going to work. Um, so these are good to have. And and if you're in an area that has a lot of good tinder, maybe you don't use this first just right. because you have it. If you've got quality tinder laying around that's easily accessible, use it. Um, and I'd recommend doing that when you're out camping and practicing and stuff first. Because in a survival situation, this stuff is your fallback. This is, you know, or crisis, you know, I'm wet and I'm cold. I need a fire. I need one right now. Well, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go this route. Yeah. Um, but to build your skills up, start with a little bit harder. And I don't mean with a friction fire. Yeah. I mean, you know, try natural tenders, maybe practice with your ferro rod, but have these other methods on you so that when those fail, you know, when you can't find quality natural tenders, yeah. you have a way to get a fire going. Yeah, and so I mean that that kind of leads us into you know the man-made uh, tenders that you know help us get the fire started. Yeah. Um, and and then Chris talked about you know nature. I mean you know birch wood or birch bark and you know fat fat wood. wood. Um, I carry fat wood in in yeah, all of my I kits. I keep in mind too because uh, it can be shaved down. Yeah, you don't want to. You know when you go to use this stuff, it's going to be same principles as the magnesium. You're just going to shave off a pile of it. Yeah, same principle. And a little pile of these curls like that, you know, a little yeah. more than that, of course, yeah. but that's all you need to do. And this will last for a long, long time. This will yeah. start many, many fires for you. Now, if you're in an area where it's wet and, and you've got poor, poor wood, then you can split Baton. this thing out, yeah. start making little toothpick-sized pieces to help feed that fire, to get the heat up, to start drying that material out to um, keep a fire going. So, you know, that's man-made. Um, you want to talk about kits? Yeah, I mean, here's one. Um, this came in a battle box that I have, and I'll be doing a video on battle box later. A little different than what everybody else does. I hate those. Yeah. Let's open it. Um, I don't do that. But this one's a zombie tender, and so you can buy commercial kits, you know, yeah. and, and this is one. And SOL. Yeah, yeah, SOL. I love their products, mm -hmm. actually. I'm a real fan of theirs. And so in here, you know, they give you a piece of uh, paracord for making a bow drill. Again, back to primitive last ditch. Some juke twine. 
Um, this is what they were famous for, I guess. This is their zombie fire starter. But look at this. This is like fire. Their last. Their. Their. I gotta have a fire. I gotta have it right now. Well, yeah. if all you're carrying is a ferro rod, which is kind of funny to me in this kit, you need a flame to light this. There's a wick. Mm -hmm. You need a lighter. You need um, a match. They didn't put any of those items in here. Even one match, one lifeboat match, yeah. would have been. Yeah. And so there's no way to light that thing. But, and then they've got a piece of petroleum gauze or petroleum cotton and some char cloth, which I know you don't like char cloth. No. I like char cloth. I make it at home. Once again, you know, dirty. You know it, yeah, it's dirty. very, His here, here's dirty. what it is. It's uh, the reason why I don't gravitate towards it. Um, it doesn't engulf with flame. I mean, no, it, it, it's it, a smolder. It keeps an ember. And it that, takes that. Then you yeah. need another process. I mean, you need yes. something else. You need a very fine, tender bundle. Yeah. To then blow this into flame. It's not like you're going to put a spark to this Whoosh. to this char cloth and have fire and have a flame. You're going to have a little glowing, smoldering thing that you need to put into a, a tinder ball and nurse into a flame by blowing into it and and keeping the oxygen flow going. Yeah. And so that is a skill for sure. It's not. That's not a guaranteed fire. Yeah. Um, and then they include a pretty nice fire steel. You know, it's machined. Little aluminum deal. It's got the striker built into it. The striker comes out this end. I always get this wrong. So there's the striker. So it's all machined together on a lanyard so you can keep it together. But it's a, it's a pretty nice little striker. And then they add a flint and steel. And, and I'm going to knock them on this because here's the piece of steel. And as you can see, they've got a divot here too for using it for a bearing block for a bow drill. So that's kind of a neat idea. This is a little bit heavy. Yeah, um, it's steel. It's steel. I mean, it's just carbon steel. It's just yeah. raw steel. Um, so it'll also rust, something to bear in mind. And they put this piece of flint in here. Except this isn't flint. Um, this is some kind of a piece of, like... It's like calcium. Almost oil. like limestone. Yeah, it, limestone, yeah. Now, there is a nugget of flint right there. <laughs> but I've tried with this thing many times, and I have yet to ever see a spark come off of it. Um, see, I'm just knocking yeah. chunks of, calcium, of, of lime off of this. But, so you, you, you need to be careful when you buy commercial kits. Um, and test them. And test them. Don't, don't yeah. buy something like this and throw it in your patent. I'm good. I've yeah. got a fire kit. Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from this and, and, and their lack of forward thinking on this item, this is fairly decent. You know, it's, it's very basic. I yeah. mean, you get a ferro rod and a couple pieces of tinder. That's all you get in this mm -hmm. kit. So, you know, I would be careful. I'm not saying don't buy one. I think it's a pretty neat kit. It comes in a tin, and they got a couple of, like cord locks in here for making a lanyard um, for something. I'm presuming with that yeah. paracord. So it's not a bad kit, but um, I wouldn't qualify it as a as a as a good kit. Yeah. Um, it would be better than nothing. You know, it'd be something to have. So when you're in, when you're looking at fire kits, and maybe we should do that. We, maybe we should do a. Uh, Comparison. Compare, get a few, yeah. buy several of them, and we'll do a tabletop comparison. Maybe even take them out in the field, and yeah. and, and we'll put them to test yeah. to see what they do. Because um, I, I hate seeing people buy stuff like this under the guise of being ready. Yeah, and, and, and what I always tell people is, if you just feel like in, in in your state of of life right now, I don't have time to put a fire kit together. Yeah. Now, if, if your first thought is, I don't know how to put a fire kit together. Just listen to what we're saying. We are going to tell you what to put in the Watch the, fire the video kit. again. Just watch the video. <laughs> if you just say, I just do not have time to buy the stuff, put it in a bag, build it myself, yeah. go, go buy a kit. Go buy know? one, yeah. But in, in, in all actuality, I mean, you can put a better fire kit together for the same price with everything in it that you know how to use, and it will work. And it will you work. Know. For less money than you're uh, going to spend on one of these. I will say, we didn't talk, you know, lifeboat matches. I was just going to say, that we uh, haven't talked matches. C containers. You know, for them, oh, I, yeah. I, I say make sure. Yeah, uh, I like Ziploc well, bags. You know, yes, little little containers yeah. like this. This is just an example of something that you could very easily turn into a fire kit. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I like Ziploc bags. You know, uh, from from hiking, <clears throat> I keep weight down. It's it's waterproof. Well, this is a lock sack. I was gonna say, see now the difference between uh, when we're talking Ziploc bags. Let's talk about that. This is a lock sack bag. These yeah. are great bags. This is your conventional sandwich Ziploc sandwich bag. Yeah. And it's been in my pack for a long time, and it's starting to show its wear in a big way. Um, I'm actually duct taping it back together now, so yeah. I've got to do something different. So make sure whatever you build your kit yeah. in, it's, it's robust. Yeah. You know, it can survive. You know, the life of your gear inside your pack is hard. Yeah. You know, just even if you're not carrying it. Mine lives in the bed of my truck. 
and that stuff pays a price. Um, it, it's it's a kind of a harsh environment to manufacture. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's that's you know that I mean, in in since we're talking about kits, I mean, listen, it can be a big fire kit like this. This is this is pretty big. But what I have in here is a, a three inch, four inch uh, fixed blade uh, knife in here as well, so that I can baton small stuff. With. I know it's not huge, yeah. you know, I'm not batoning, you know, right. three, four inch, five inch, you know, but getting batoning going, you know, you got to have, you have to have a, a blade on you. I yes. mean, if it's, if, if it's a must need tool for the most part yes. for fire starting. for getting wood small enough to keep, catch fire. Or carbon uh, feather sticks, which is something we yeah, talk about what all I, the time. What I also have in here is a headlamp, just a small headlamp, yep. because once again, being in the woods, I found it's dark. It's dark early. It gets dark quick. And, and it is hard working when you don't have light around yep. you. And, and listen, making, it, making a fire isn't extremely difficult, no. but it's not turning on the stove at your house, you know, no. and burning, or turning no. on the barbecue grill. Um, and, and most of the time, if you're in a, if we're just hiking, you and I are just hiking, yeah. hey, we got some time to build a fire, fine, we're hanging out. If you're in a survival situation, you are cold yeah. or wet. Scared. Scared. Stressed. Need a fire. Yeah. I need a fire now. Yeah. And, and then you add darkness to that in like, the, psycholog the psychological side of that yeah. is already, already you already acknowledge the fact you're lost, or maybe you're not acknowledging the fact yeah. you're lost yet, and your stress level's building, um, and, and panic can set in. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about the, the psychological benefits of fire. Not only is it going to warm you and cook food and process water to make it safe to drink, the psychological boost that having that fire going does for you yeah. is profound. Now, the other side of that coin is, when I talked earlier about collecting enough firewood, the psychological loss, if it goes out, yeah. it is just as profound. And not being able to start one is just as bad as well. So make sure that you can get a fire started and make sure you plan to keep that fire going. Yeah. Um, if you're in a survival situation and you're sitting around thinking, oh, I don't have anything to do. Yeah, you do. You collect firewood. Yeah. Um, that's an ongoing job. If you're in a survival situation, if you're not collecting food or water or working on your shelter, you need to be collecting firewood because um, you will never have enough. Yeah. You will never have enough. There's no such thing as too much. Yeah. Um, you know, and then as far as other items that I put in, this is something that has, has saved me a couple times. It's going to sound so dumb. Uh, oh, here's another something. Talk about. Your Fresno lens. Yeah, I was uh, going to mention those. because so, so, you know, it's a magnifying lens. Yeah. I mean, credit card size. Yeah. You know, now and they it, work. It's got to be sunlight. Yeah, very uh, bright. Very bright, you know, but it'll work. But I also keep, this is a soda can that I cut up. Uh, and I've used this more times than I can count uh, because I can stand it up to make a windshield. Oh, yeah. Windscreen that yeah. I can get my fire started. I have literally, not this one, but I have taken my fire starting kit into my vestibule of my tent because it was raining so much to get the fire to going. get the fire going, and then I carried it out on the metal and got it going. So I've used this as a windscreen. I've used it uh, so many different ways yeah. to get a fire started. And listen, once again, it it always feels like we need a third hand. Yeah. So now I have my tender in one hand, I have my lighter in the other, and I have no way to protect. Right. So now I'm trying to you know put my fire tender on the ground. I'm trying to block it with my hand. I'm trying to light it with the fire. Uh, Little tiny piece. I That's mean, a really good little hack right and, there. I like and that. I, I, I started with aluminum foil, but it's it's too light. Yeah. It's just too light. Wind, blows, blow that wind away. blows it. Yeah. This gives it a little bit sturdier. You can actually get it in the ground. Um, I, I've, I've even started my fire on these because the ground was so soaking wet that I've started my fire on it and then I just built my fire over it. Yeah. And then in the next morning when just it was dumped out, dumped it out, grabbed it, yep. threw it back Take in. It with you. Pack it, pack out what you pack. That's in. right. Um, you know that, and then um, in all of my fire kits, I always have duct tape. Yeah, I have duct tape in many it, places in my stuff. It does two things. Duct tape is something that I never see in anybody's fire kit ever, and and it's something that number one, you open it up, get the sticky side, and stick your tender to it. Listen, magnesium. Uh, uh, yeah. Fatwood dust, yep. uh, light, uh, instant fire, whatever. If you have any wind at all, whoosh, yeah. it's gone. 
And and two, like with duct tape, like we showed my kit once before already on another video. I take duct tape and lay it out, and I pour this stuff in there. Yeah. Nice and thick, as much as it'll stick, and then roll that up, put a little rubber band around it. That's an instant piece of tinder that not only is the magnesium going to catch and burn, but it's going to set that tape on fire. Yeah. It gives me a little more burn time, yeah. a little more room for I get my crap together and, now. Yeah, so it holds it together and it gives you gives you some some fuel as well to, to get the yep. fire going. So I always have duct tape in there. Uh, I always have a windscreen. Um, you know, that those are some of the things, the, the hard knocks that I've yeah. that I've learned. Yeah, uh, wind's a big one. That's uh, wind uh, and water, obviously. And, and I've, even, I've even set this thing up as a teepee. And started my fire under it because it's been raining because it raining so on you? much and, wow. and get it started enough. So that's a neat little idea. I never so, thought of that. So, um, so you know, these are the things that that I've learned the hard way, and and that's part of what I want the university to be. It's not just us, hey, showing you the cool products, what we use. Yeah. It's it's our, I would say, sucky life experiences yeah. that, you know, I've been enough of those that. And in and in future videos, we'll actually be doing some of that for yeah. you guys. We'll get out there in some of the crap weather and. Let's get a shelter up and get a fire going. Yeah, you know, yeah, just so you can see how much fun it is. And, and we'll do the things where, hey, you think that it's a really flat area, and that's because it's a riverbed. And then when it yeah. starts raining in the middle of the night, yeah. you find out it's a riverbed. <laughs> Not that I've been there before. Uh, so, so I always have that stuff, and then um, Instafire and Fatwood yep. carry it nonstop. Yeah, I always uh, have some of this. So, so that's what you'll always find in my fire kit, along with a lighter and you know a, a spark wheel. Um, so, so that's what I carry. Um, do you want to add anything to um, it? Not, not much that I can think of to add right now, other than preparing your materials ahead of time. That can't be stressed enough. Yep. Um, get your tender, tender bundle, keep it dry. Yep. If, if you're in a wet area, take your tender, put it in your jacket. Yes. You know, carry it in your body. Your body heat will dry that out. So while you're getting all your other stuff together, you can collect your tender bundle, bundle it up, put it inside your jacket, and continue your work of getting everything else together. Processing your wood, breaking things down, getting them ready. So you've got your kindling and your fuel, everything staged out, it's yeah. all right there. Then you can take your tinder bundle out at the last minute, get that spark to it, get it lit, and start building your fire. Yeah. So you're not running around looking for the stuff when the fire's there. You, I mean, you've got to have it ready ahead of time. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll pull out the old war stories here. <laughs> uh, I, we did like a, like a 15 or so mile hike day and we decided, hey, let's push three more to the next campsite. Uh, it was in North, it was on the Appalachian Trail, Northern uh, North Carolina. Uh, it was getting cold, but we said, all right, let's do that another three miles because then it allowed us to do some more mileage the next day. Uh, we got to this campsite and we didn't know it was kind of a quasi like public campsite. Uh -huh. A lot of guys car camping. I mean, oh. there, were, there were like people everywhere. Literally could not find a stick or yeah. twig yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Because there were 50 other people that were doing the same, same exact, exact thing. thing yeah. So, I mean, we got in there. It was like 6 o'clock at night. Sun is going down. <laughs> it's dark. And there's no twigs. It's like yeah. you're in a forest. And you can't and find a stick on the ground. There's nowhere. no sticks on Someone the ground. Someone went there and cleaned up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I mean, we literally had to hike like a half a mile to find a dead tree because and then had to process it that night. So, wow. so, as far as, you know, tender and stuff goes, I'll pick up small twigs and stuff. And, and as far as putting them in your jacket, you know, if, if you're hiking during the day and it's raining, everything's going to be wet at night. Yep. So pick it up in the middle of the day, put it in your jacket, pockets, pants, pockets, whatever it might be, and let that stuff start drying. Um, let's talk about home, fire, you know, survival situation at home. It's winter time. You know, we need to keep a fire going. I mean, I would say, first of all, as far as processed firewood, it needs a couple months to dry out. Yeah, I mean, I keep a big stack. Like, I'm going camping next weekend, I told yeah. you. Um, one of the things I'm doing is I'm loading up a bunch of my wood to take into my trailer. I'm just taking it with me. That way I know when I get to this campground, because like you said, it's a, public, it's a state campground, I'm not out there trying to make sure yeah. I have wood. I'm taking it with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you need to think ahead if, if a f potential for having to heat your home or to cook over a fire is, is anywhere remotely possible in your scenarios, plan ahead. Get a pile of wood. I mean, it's easy to do. Like in Florida right now down here. You can get firewood everywhere. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. after the storm, there's trees down everywhere. If it's stacked all over the side of the road, you can just stop and load it up. Yeah. Take it home, pile it up, and, and let it let it cure. Because um, green wood is tough to burn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not going to burn nearly as hot, nearly no. as long. Um, so you know, you definitely want to give it a couple months if you're if you're processing yeah. wood. Um, 
the commercial fire logs, you know, that you can buy at the store, Home Depot. Yeah. As far as in a fireplace at home, they're a fantastic start. They're a good start. Because you what can, I use you can get a little bit wetter wood on it that's not completely yep. dry, and those things get hot enough. It, there are a lot of the products that we have on the table built into a log. Yeah, what I do with those things, I'll, I'll buy those fire logs, and uh, I take my axe, and I'll take a chunk off the end of it about like that. Light that in the fireplace, and then build my fire on top of it. Because then I can throw bigger stuff on there. Yeah. I'm not having to try to start at the small end and work yeah. up. If I want a fire in the fireplace just for the, the you know niceness of a fire in the house, yeah. um, I'll start with that and just put on bigger stuff to get it going. But, you know, keep that stuff on hand. Have it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, when you need it, it's not the time to be looking for it. That yeah. goes for any of the stuff we're talking about. And, and I will say, you know, end with, if you find yourself in a, a, a dire situation, uh, gravitate towards a camping stove, a backpacking stove. If you've got a butane stove, I mean, that's the hottest fire. I mean, it's a blue flame yeah. that if you've got to get your hands warm, if your core temperature has gone to nothing, I mean, grab a Mylar blanket or something to wrap up and get that thing started. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the flick of a switch. Yeah. Or the strike of a lighter or something. Well, and, and, and going. And we're going to be talking about stoves on, in a video on food here soon. And, and I think everybody should carry a stove, personally. Right. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't want a stove. Or in their bug out bags, of, well, there's only so much fuel and it only lasts so long, so there's no sense in taking it. Well, the sense in taking it is for those times when you're cold, wet, you can't get a fire going, and you yeah. need to warm up. So, you've got a stove and a, and a pot and your like say your water bottle you can light your stove put a pot of water on it get it boiling keep your hands around it for the warmth as soon as it's hot pour it in your water bottle stick it in your jacket yeah help warm you up put it in your sleeping bag at night um you know it'll help warm you back up i think everybody should carry one and i, I know a lot of guys don't because they say oh, the, the fuel will run out well then when the fuel runs out you know throw the empty fuel can away hang on to the stove you never know you might find another one yeah um, or you can cannibalize it for other stuff later. But but I think everybody should carry one. And they, they're so small today, some of them. we got a couple of different ones we'll show in another video. But um, I think everybody, it should be part of everybody's kit. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up here for fire. Uh, make sure you comment below questions, uh, you know, comments, uh, whatever you might have. Uh, comment on Chris's beard. You know, always make sure that's you do nice, that. Um, He's jealous. Yeah, I am. So... Uh, <laughs> And, um, you know, and we'll get to your questions. We'll make sure they're answered. Absolutely. Uh, put in, you know, what you carry, what you like as far as, you know, yeah, your first Yeah, let's see line. your eyes because this, is, this isn't just us pitching this stuff out. You know, this is the, the uh, Survival Dispatch community, and that's yeah. what we want. We want community input. We want to know what you guys are doing, how you do things. Um, hear your ideas, stuff we didn't think of. Like, obviously, we didn't mention everything. Dryer lint. There's all kinds of stuff we didn't yeah. talk about. Yeah. But, you know, this is a, a good rundown on, on how to get started. Um, and some basics. And again, we'll do some videos on actually getting out and building the fires. Um, there's a lot of people that can't build a fire with a damn match, you know, and you know, you need to know how to build a fire to get a fire going. Yeah. So we'll cover that another time. So guys, stay safe. We'll see you next time. Till next time, guys.